Welcome to another episode. My name is Michael Riley and I am a ballpoint pen artist here on YouTube. And I'm really excited to get into this and to share my knowledge. Tip number one, mastering smooth hatching lines. This is my go-to. This is why I put this tip as number one because I use hatching in my ballpoint pen drawings all the time. Before I started becoming like amazing, amazing like I am now, I draw in ballpoint pen. I used to use other techniques, which I will get into, but this one hatching technique has taken my drawings from, I guess, 50% amazing to 100% amazing. Hatching is so underestimated. The reason why is because hatching creates smooth lines, consistent lines with your portraits or whatever you're drawing with ballpoint pen or even graphite. You don't see lines intersecting one another. It's just one direction, super smooth, super consistent. Make sure you're holding your pen uh, what's best for you. For me, I like to just hold my pen like I've been holding my pen for years. I'll show you right here. But other than that, I think that being comfortable with the position of the pen in your hand will allow you to create consistent lines. What's equally important to hand position is also hand pressure. Hand pressure is super important when drawing with ballpoint pen because you're dealing with ink and ink can get too dark. And I noticed it's kind of difficult for people to create light lines with ballpoint pen. You have to consistently think about how much pressure you're applying to the paper. Your drawing can vary depending on the pressure you might need to apply. For example, I noticed with smooth paper, just like sketch paper, you're gonna have to be very careful about how much pressure you apply to the paper. For me, if I apply medium pressure to smooth paper, the pen is gonna come out super dark because the paper is just so smooth. There's no texture to it, just nothing. So the pen just, you know, goes right on the paper. And sometimes I mess up because I feel like the lines are way too dark. So I recommend using watercolor paper because watercolor paper has some texture to it. When you're drawing very lightly, you can slowly build up to the value you want with the pen strokes. Tip number two, utilizing cross hatching for depth and dimension. This is what I like to call my OG technique. I've been using this drawing technique since I ever even started with ballpoint pen. I just started to let go of that technique little by little, but I still implement it in some of my drawings. Cross hatching is a go-to, especially for beginners, because this allows you to learn how to build value in different areas of the drawing. Cross hatching is super important no matter what you're working with. This technique really helps you understand shadows and highlights and how to transition from those shadows to highlights, which is super important. When I look at artists, beginners, I see a lot of portraits and the transitions from the shadows to the highlights they're kind of too sharp or just too contrast. There's no smooth flow with those shadows into highlights. So cross hatching will definitely help you to get there. It's pretty much the same as hatching, but you're just adding lines in the opposite direction of where the original lines were. So they're gonna kind of be like perpendicular and there could be all different types of angles, but just know that the lines will be intersecting and will be laying on top of one another. I've made so many videos with the cross hatching technique. You can see them on my page. This technique is really fun to work with and I don't see myself giving it up 100%, especially when I draw objects or like different parts of the anatomy like hands or still life drawings. I feel like cross hatching is the number one technique when it comes to drawing with pen. So make sure you practice and practice with this technique until you get consistent lines. Tip number three, stippling. I never understood the power of stippling. The first time I learned about stippling was really in high school in art class. And I tried it a few times, but it just wasn't for me. Now, when I started to work with ballpoint pen, I started to realize this can be really useful, especially with working on really tight, small areas of your portrait. When I'm working on watercolor paper, it's difficult to get inside like the crevice of certain parts of the portrait, like where the eye meets or just small areas because the paper is so textured. It's like I'm trying to cross hatch into like this small little area that needs to be darkened but then I end up making it too dark because of the texture, it's, it's too much. So I decide, you know what, let me start implementing stippling. Stippling is perfect when drawing like the pupil or the iris of the eye. Uh, it's perfect for when you have to draw the lines and the crevices of the eye. It's amazing for some parts of the ear. And depending on what kind of hair texture you're drawing, it's amazing for hair as well. 
To understand stippling is to understand spacing and density. You have to understand how to space the dots. If I'm drawing very short here, like a fade or just like a shortcut, then I'll use stippling for the side of the hair. Or if someone has like a mustache, but it's shaved, then I'll use stippling for like the little hairs on the mustache. Same with the beard. And it's very useful for just creating different textures in your portrait. Tip number four. This tip I picked up early in my ballpoint pen drawing journey is scribbling. Scribbling is underestimated, just like stippling. What I've noticed is that artists love to draw hair, but sometimes the hair just doesn't look quite right. And I think the technique they're missing is scribbling. Again, depending on the subject's hair texture, scribbling can really benefit you. When the subject's hair has like different variations, you're just trying to figure out okay how do i structure this in a way where i can take this hair step by step but sometimes you just need to block out the shadows and then go in with scribbling scribbling can make a big difference uh, even with beards and mustaches or just hair in general that's why i mainly use scribbling for is for hair i really never use it on skin at all because i just don't see the benefit of drawing skin with scribbling. But if you draw skin with scribbling, please let me know in the comments. That's very interesting, but I've never found any luck with scribbling on skin. I just find scribbling best used with hair. When you draw hair, you know how strands of hair come out of the head, like just random strands? That can help, scribbling can help. Like scribbling super lightly can give your drawings that small detail that the viewers will just be in awe about. So scribbling is an amazing technique. Tip number five, line weight. Line weight is something I had to learn over time. And once I learned it, let me tell you, my drawings, it does a lot. To the average person looking at artwork, I'm sure they wouldn't pick out, oh, look, look at the line weight. You know, it makes the drawing look amazing. I don't think the average person does that. I think line weight is something that you implement in your artwork. And when people do look at it, it becomes something they really enjoy, but without really knowing why they enjoy it. Line weight can make a portrait or any drawing stand out, pop out of the page. Understanding this technique allows you to understand contrast. When there's a highlight hitting one side of the object you're drawing, and then on the other side where the shadow is, you want the line to be thicker and darker versus where the highlight is, you want the line to be very light and skinnier. To control your line weight is to control the pressure with pen. I know it can be hard drawing with ink, especially when you're using different variation of line weight and line thickness. Take your time with it. You're gonna mess up here or there, but make sure you learn from that mistake. Make sure you practice and practice and practice with line weight. Over time, the better you become at drawing, the easier it is just to understand line weight for some reason, but it'll, you will get there and it will definitely show up. Tip number six, embracing imperfections. Look, you're gonna mess up at some point. <laughs> we all mess up at some point. Michelangelo messed up at some point. Da Vinci, Charles White, uh, Kende Wiley. Like, people mess up at some point and that's how you learn that's how you become a better artist failing is not always negative it can be good as well you can learn from those failures so when you're creating artwork make sure you put your all into it but understand you're still learning no matter what stage you're at for me i'm still learning every single day and you know what? Sometimes mistakes can actually be very beneficial. There's times where I made mistakes with drawing a ballpoint pen and I realized I can actually use this in a different way. Like I might accidentally draw a line somewhere. I didn't mean to draw it, but I learned how to correct that line. Like I learned how to erase that line with my electric eraser and how to cover it up by making the values a little darker. I encourage you guys to make mistakes, but don't make too many because I still want the drawing to look, you know, really nice but just don't be afraid of it is what I'm saying. Pen can be daunting, especially when you're first using it to draw, but trust me, just like anything you do, you will get better at it, you will get more comfortable with it. Do not let it scare you. Enjoy the process of learning and improving your skills over time. Tip number seven, practicing patience and persistence. This tip is probably the most important tip especially i mean especially when drawing with ballpoint pen when i tell you patience is something 
I have definitely learned over time. This is something I was forced to learn over time. I remember drawing with pen for the first time in high school. I would draw for hours. I mean, hours. And then when I'm finally done with the drawing, I'll look at it and then I'll tell myself, this drawing is trash. I need to do another one. And <laughs> when I tell you like sitting there for hours and just slowly understanding this medium, this material, can be very, very annoying. It really has taught me life lessons when it comes to patience. Not only am I able to sit now for like six hours straight just drawing with ballpoint pen, or even all day, honestly, because there's times where I drew all day with ballpoint pen, and it has taught me patience, implementing peace and being calm <laughs> with my life and being patient with other people. This is the medium that forces you to do that. I'm sure you're gonna get stressed at times. That happens with anything you do. So why not do it with this? I feel like drawing is a very unique talent. Not many people have it. It's kind of like a lost art. And if you can be a professional in your field, whether you draw with graphite, pen, colored pencil, then that can get you a long way because I don't see many professional artists that draw with these mediums. These are seven quick tips off the top of my head. I really hope this helps you all. I really do. Because when I started to draw with pen, I didn't have a teacher that understood the medium. Uh, I would have to go to YouTube and learn a lot of this stuff. Although I am mainly self-taught, this small amount of YouTubers I found that actually draw amazing portraits with pen, it was hard to get information because the ones I really thought that like I want to get to that point, they didn't really share the tips and techniques with drawing with pen. So I would have to like watch their process and just learn for myself. I don't see many ballpoint pen artists on YouTube to share their tips and tricks with other artists. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe and get to drawing. Just do it. Don't be afraid. Just, just start.